Hi, and welcome to The Bright Balloon, a podcast where I'm sharing bright ideas for your balloon business. My name is Sarah Meyer, and I'm a balloon business owner like you, and I love the creative side of what I do, but I really love the business side, which seems to be the part where most people struggle. So I'm here to help. Each week, I'm bringing you an episode full of bite-sized tips you can use to make improvements in your business. I want you to make more money, eliminate stress, and learn along with me as we grow our creative businesses together. Welcome to The Bright Balloon, presented by 17 Hats. Hello and welcome to another episode. Today, I am interviewing Heather, who is the assistant to Tiffany at Confetti Castle. So this is the first time, I believe, that I have interviewed someone who works for a company but is a non-owner. And it was really interesting hearing tips that Heather has for not only keeping assistants happy, but how to best utilize their skills. So I love this interview. I definitely think there is going to be another interview because I think Heather has so much to teach us. And most of us are owners not really knowing how to utilize assistants or struggling to hire or struggling to keep our employees happy, um, which is why I loved learning from Heather in this episode. So let's take a quick break and head to the You Glue hotline for some great advice that sticks and then get into this episode with Heather from Confetti Castle. Welcome to the You Glue hotline where we discuss great advice that sticks brought to you by Pro Tapes. If you have a question or some great advice to share, click the link in the show notes to call in and leave a voicemail. Hey, Sarah, my name is Heather. Um, my business is Popping Off Balloons in Tampa Bay, Florida. Um, first, I want to say thank you so much for the show. I listen every week, and I'm so grateful for all the tips and information you have shared with us, as well as congratulations on your new baby. I hope everything is going well for you. I have a tip for everyone out there. Um, my tip is rubber bands. I buy them in bulk at Sam's Club. I used to use 260s and cut them in half and spend a lot of time tying them to attach things together. Now I use rubber bands to put the mini balloons on garland. I tape them to the back of foils to attach foils. And I go through so many rubber bands. It's way more cost effective than buying a bunch of 260s. And I'll attach two of them together. You can do endless things with the rubber bands. Thanks again, Sarah. Bye. Pro Tapes is a leading manufacturer of specialty tape products like Pro Gaff, Pro Artist Tape, and our favorite balloon tape, U Glue, which helps you create amazing balloon arrangements and decorations in less time. You can save 5% on U Glue when you buy directly from Having a Party using code BRIGHT at checkout. All right, welcome to this episode. Heather, you are the first of your kind <laughs> to come on. So you are an assistant for a balloon yes. company, specifically Confetti Castle. So you work with our friend Tiffany yes. and welcome. Thanks for sharing. Thank <laughs> Before we dive in, can you give us an introduction of who you are, but also what you do? Okay. My name is Heather Balknight. I am 33 years old. I have been Tiffany likes to call me her right hand. I like to say left hand because she's a lefty <laughs> and I'm her assistant in the business. We have been working together for four years now. So basically how I got into the whole business is I had never done anything with balloons. I was bar managing at the time and I was working at the same restaurant as Tiffany's husband. Okay. So that's how I met Tiffany. She would come in to see her husband, you know, at work occasionally. She would come and sit at the bar with me. And so we kind of just like hit it off and started having a friendship from there. Then COVID happened and my whole restaurant was laid off. And oh, so, okay. That was going to be my next yes. question. I was like, did so, she poach you? <laughs> yes. She may have poached me if the restaurant wouldn't have closed, but it just so happened that the whole restaurant closed. I needed work. And she was basically like, you, my business is actually thriving right now. She was doing those balloon activity bags, like dropping them off at yeah. people's houses once the lockdown happened. And so business was booming. And she was like, I could use some extra help, at least until you figure out what you're going to do next. And I've been a part of the team ever since. So what do you do now? So right now, I mean, I feel like it's 
the same with everybody in this business. My days look different from day to day, which is part of what I really enjoy about it. But I am heavily involved on the admin side, like handle majority of email correspondence. Okay. I'm doing a lot of like calendar management from day to day. So updating our calendar with order details as those get finalized. I also send out a lot of invoices and estimates as well. And then we like to say I'm kind of like a project manager, I guess. I oversee a lot of making sure that our team members that are doing a lot of the production work know the tasks that they need to do okay. and keeping everybody kind of on task to make sure everything is getting ready for the jobs that we have in the coming days. Okay. So do you... I would say that's probably like the majority Okay. I do go on installs. Um, right. Because I see you on Instagram. So do you know how to make everything? Yes. And did you feel like that was an important component before you could start selling? Yes. Okay. So before I was ever doing like invoicing and estimates and that kind of thing, I was doing a lot of like admin, like email correspondence, but basically like teeing people up, basically like getting them all the way to the point of where they're ready for an estimate or an invoice and then having Tiffany do that part until I had like gone on enough installs myself and was comfortable enough with like, this doorway needs about this many feet of garland and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, just getting familiar with all of that. So I definitely was doing a lot of like hands-on installing and that kind of thing before I was at the point where I am now where I can pretty much send estimates and invoices you know, just like anybody else. Yeah. Would you say you like manage the staff too? I know Tiffany travels a lot. So yes. when she's gone, are you like in charge? Yes. Okay. Do you and do training? Kind of like the understanding by everybody, like they just yeah. know, like, you know, even when Tiffany's here too, I'm like very detail oriented. So okay. I also help her to know, like, this is the things that we need. I'm usually sending her lists of like things that I need her help with, things that I know that only she can handle. And like giving her lists of those kind of things to make sure that side is like running smoothly too. Yeah. Interesting. Do you have any like little nitty gritty tips in terms of how you actually communicate? Like, do you use an app? Do you text? Do you, are you just in the office all the time? Like, how do you guys actually communicate? Yeah. So we're actually trying to like figure out a more streamlined way to do this because the main way that we do it, honestly, right now is through shared notes. Oh, okay. Everybody has an iPhone. So I'm a big, big list maker. And so for my own self, keep a running to-do list of what needs to be done. Like, for example, Tiffany and I were out of town last week in Vegas for the Tough Tax experience, mm -hmm. which was super fun. So the only people here were Ashley, Sal, and Tiffany's husband, Ciro. So basically what I did was I had one big shared note for everybody. And I just put, you know, Monday, these are the things that need to get done. Tuesday, these are the things that need to get done. If somebody doesn't know what to do, here's like ongoing kind of tasks that somebody can work on. And then they're going through and checking off. So it's basically how we're also checking to make sure like, where are we at? What did we get done? What did not get done? Yeah. That kind of thing. So that's honestly how we usually do it. I am in the office a lot. So a lot of times people can just come and ask me, yeah. but even when I'm in the office, I like to have like a running list just so it's easy to like not have people constantly coming and asking you like, Hey, what needs to be done next? We are kind of getting to a point where a few of the staff members, like they can pick up on, you know, things that need to be done next. Like they can look at the calendar and say like, you know, I see that this Garland has add-ons. Like, do you know what those are? Yet? Yeah. They're like a bit so more self-sufficient. Yeah, for sure. Very cool. Cool. All right. Let's take a quick break. And then I want to talk about being an employee versus an owner. So yeah. hang tight. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take your balloon business to the next level? Look no further than having a party wholesale, your ultimate destination for all things balloons. Having a party wholesale is on the cutting edge of new products that will wow your clients from top brands like Tuftex, Jamar, Anagram, Ellie's, Sempertex, Premium Conwin, and introducing Brooklyn, a new balloon line created by the Having a Party family. They've got the widest selection to fuel your creativity. Join the successful league of professional balloon artists who shop at havingaparty.com. All right, welcome back. 
So you are not the owner of this company. And the majority of the people that I interview are owners. So we're very motivated by money. You know, the more we do, the more we get growth because that's all ours too. I feel like a lot of the people we hear from are either about freedom or about money. Hmm. As an employee, I guess like what are you motivated by? buy that keeps you around? Because I feel like so many of us started balloon businesses to get away from a job that we hated. So yeah. what is it that you like about being an employee versus running the thing and, and being the owner? So before I worked with Tiffany, I was always kind of in roles where I was like assisting other people. That's kind of like always been something that I really love doing. I love supporting other people in their roles. I don't need to be like the face of anything. I hate being like the center of attention. So for me to have a role of like where I'm just setting somebody else up for success, like giving them the tools and like the comfort, I guess, of like having me in place to know that they can step away and do other things besides just like the day to day gives me like a lot of purpose. Yeah, honestly. But yeah, before I was doing this, I was in a management role where I was having to do a lot of like support for the staff support for the manager. Before that I was in live production for a church. Okay. So doing a lot of like supporting pastors and then supporting like the people that were overseeing all the production stuff. So I've always kind of found myself in those roles. I feel like it's where I thrive. I like to say that I'm like a creative hybrid with a admin brain. Okay. I feel like a lot of times you don't find that with creatives. A lot of times we're like kind of all over the place. Yeah. But I feel like I'm like a weird hybrid of the two. So it's fun for me to be able to like basically partner with somebody and be able to be like that person that kind of like helps keep them yeah, you know, doing the things that are important to them while I like kind of do behind the scenes and do is the there, of the details. Is there ever a time where you're just like, thank God I get to just like not be the one to deal with this? Like, yes. I'm so glad I don't yes. have to handle this. For sure. Yeah. What What are those types of things that come up that you like happily get to walk away from? I hate conflict. Okay. Um, we thankfully do not have a lot of like unhappy clients, but usually, you know, in the few times where there have been Tiffany likes to step in, you know, as the owner and be like, you know, I feel like I'm the one that needs to handle this and that kind of thing. So I'm happy to be out of that and not have to, you know, be the face, be the owner and that kind of thing. We don't, we honestly don't have that many like staff issues either. And I will step in sometimes and just like, cause we're all pretty close. We're all friends. So I am comfortable with like having tough conversations with people as far as like, things that I need them to do better or change and that kind of thing. But again, it's like it gets to a certain level where I'm like, oh, I'm glad that I don't have to be the one to deal with. Yeah. Like this is above my pay grade and I get to just like not be the one to have this conversation. Oh, I don't want to have the conversations either. (laughs) You just avoid confrontation. I'm, I'm lucky we don't have much here either. But that actually leads to one of the questions I had. And That's about like blurring the lines between like friendship and employee, because Mm -hmm. I think you and Tiffany are pretty close. Like, and she shares openly with a lot of people. So, I mean, I guess I don't know what my question even is, except from an employee standpoint. Do you prefer that? Like, do you find that comforting that you are so close? Does it sometimes get hard? Like, I couldn't work in times when it's hard. Yeah. You know, Tiffany like holds people to a high standard. I hold myself to a high standard. So, you know, when I mess up, I'm like hard on myself. Yeah. Um, You know, it's hard if a friend is like frustrated with you, especially when we spend as much time together as we do. Mm -hmm. Um, But I feel like a lot of the time we do a good job of like maintaining the balance of friend and, you know, our boss slash employee relationship. Right. Um, I don't really know how we do it the way that we do it. We just, you know, like I said, Tiffany doesn't have problems with confrontation. She's very good at like being up front and to the point. So if something's bothering her, she is good at like, you know, airing it out there and having a conversation and like move on from it. Yeah. Um, We have had to like develop, I guess, like figuring out how each other works and like, what makes each other tick. Cause I'm one of those, like when there's 
conflict or like an uncomfortable situation, I kind of like shut down. Okay. And so she's like, I think at this point kind of knows like you kind of have to like give me my space for a minute and okay. then we'll like figure it out. But yeah, I think for the most part, we do a good job of like having respect for each other because at the end of the day, we are friends before yeah. anything else. And so I think that is helpful. Well, I hired a friend, Nicole, who I talk about all the time on this podcast and she like, she'll listen to this because she does like the podcast notes and lots of things for me. Yeah. But like, I think for me, it's, we don't have conflict, but it's like, it's hard for me to have boundaries because yes. like, I love talking about business all yes. the time. And sometimes I forget like, oh my gosh, it's like Saturday morning. I'm doing a delivery and this is on my mind right now. But like, she's not, she's like at yeah. her kid's softball game and like feels the need to respond to my rambling when yeah. she just, you know, like there needs to be boundaries, but like, I'm having to figure those out, you know, as we go as well. So I think it's hard. And I think there are people who are like, never work with family or friends. I just like don't know that that's realistic in this yeah. industry. I feel like the most people do work with our family and friends because it's yes. always those people who are willing to like get in the trenches with you yes. and and pitch in. I agree. And we also have had to like learn each other's boundaries too. We've definitely gotten better about like Tiffany specifically when I'm off, she does her best to not even text me about mm -hmm. work things. If she needs to give me a call and just talk to me about something friend related, she'll be like, "Hey, like personal call just so so like, I know that I don't see her like name come up and like start panicking that something's yeah. wrong, you know? And I try to do the same too. Like when she's traveling and that kind of thing, try not to bother her as much as I possibly can. If I have like questions, I try to put it all in one like message or note all at one time. That way she can look at it all in one place when she has a minute Yeah. Um, instead of just like blowing up her phone. So we've gotten better about that, but it's been a we've had to like grow and figure out what each other's boundaries are. I feel like our boundaries have also shifted and like evolved as the business has grown too. So that's been another thing too, that we've kind yeah. of like done and grown together. Well, and I would imagine that you guys have sidebar conversations all the time, yes. like things that you're like, we need to talk about this, but this isn't like an everybody conversation. Yes. Like there, there have to be those, like those levels of you know, authority yeah. or, you know, like understanding, but yeah. cool. Let's take one more break. Then I want to talk about benefits. If you wouldn't mind sharing. Sure. All right. Hang tight. Hi, this is Jeff at Balloon Suite. I'm often asked if Balloon Suite is compatible with the systems that you already use in your business, your customer relationship manager, your accounting tool, the way that you're accepting leads on your website or the phone call system that you're using to have a business number separate from your mobile number. The answer is almost always yes. So if you're thinking about using Balloon Suite or if you've checked out our packages but you haven't started yet because you're wondering if Balloon Suite is compatible with the other systems you use in your business, I would love to help you get that defined, specific, clearly actionable answer. Come on over to BalloonSuite.com, let me know what you're using, and we can help you figure out exactly how you're going to integrate that into your Balloon Suite package. All right, welcome back. So we talked about kind of blurred lines, working with friends, but you are a true employee. Like you are on payroll. I would assume you get a yes. paycheck or are you, are you salaried? Are you hourly? Do you mind me asking? I'm hourly. Hourly. Okay. But besides pay, are there any other benefits that keep you happy? Like any other perks to the job? Because I know that some of us can't hire a full-time person or there's other people that can't pay what they wish they could pay. Are there benefits that you're like, oh, that's that's actually really nice. Like just this little simple thing goes a long way. So I'm a creative at heart. I actually went to school for art. Okay. Um, I always tell people, I'm like, I think if I wouldn't have studied art, I probably wouldn't have made it through college. Maybe wouldn't have even attended college because school is not my thing. Okay. But I love art creating. I always say like when I'm creating things with my hands, like I will never feel more at home or more at ease than when that's happening. So getting to be in a job where I'm constantly getting to flex that like creative muscle and like let those creative juices flow is really awesome. I never thought that there would be something where I could, you know, have such job security that I do now and have it be such a creative role. I feel like that for me is like a huge part of it is getting to be creative day in and day out. Do you have health insurance through I your do. business? Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. Because I feel like there's all these things that when you become a business owner, you're like, 
I don't even know how to get that for myself, yeah. let alone for employees. But I, mm-hmm. I felt like I remembered her saying that she did get you health insurance. And then well, something I've noticed that is also not typical is that you've attended quite a few events at this point, like yes. conventions. You just said yes. you went to Tough Tax. Do you see that as like a work responsibility or a perk or both? I see it as both. I was going to say like getting to attend, even like we get invited to a lot of like community and in- events and things like that because of, you know, installing balloons or decor at different things. So I definitely like that aspect as well. The attending functions, I like to call them like conventions, experiences, that kind of thing. For the most part, it's like enjoyable. Like I feel like Tiffany wants me to go so I can like go and learn and like glean things from it. But there is that aspect of like also needing to work parts of it just to like keep the business, you know, on task and that kind of thing at home. So it's always like both, but I enjoy like, I definitely enjoy like the keeping people on task kind of part of my role too. So it's like, I don't know. It's almost like second nature. So I don't feel like it's like this huge, like work burden when I go. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think, I mean, I think a lot of people, maybe not a lot, but I know that I've had the conversation where people are hesitant to bring team members to conventions because it either feels like you're paying for their vacation yes, or it's because you need someone at home running things when you're gone. But I know that's one of the things that I've kind of kicked around floats like in two years from now. And I'm like, that seems like a good goal and a little mini bonus to kind of offer that to my employee who, you know, I can't pay a full time salary and I can't give her benefits. But I think if I give her like an all inclusive trip where we're both learning, it's like a mutual benefit. Yeah, I agree. And we do kind of that same thing too. We've kind of done it differently for different trips, depending on what's going on. We'll either do like, you know, Hey, I'm going to pay you like a certain number of hours for this week while we're on this trip, because I know that you will be working and I'll cover like your food and beverage or something. If it's not like an all inclusive thing. Mm -hmm. So again, it's like that kind of benefit thing. It's like, I'm not having to stay back and stay at home. Like while Tiffany is going to travel to this thing, I get to go and be a part and learn, but also it's not like affecting my paycheck or, you know, my bank account. Right. Um, if they're like, oh, I- come to this balloon convention for a week yeah, and I'm not going right. to pay you. And you're like, <laughs> right. no, thank you. Yes. <laughs> I'd rather not. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes it looks different, like depending on what the event is, but we always work it out and communicate it ahead of time. You know, this is how we are going to do compensation or, you know, trade or whatever for this event. Yeah. Cool. All right. Let's take one more break. And then you're going to teach us all how to hire an assistant. You're going to help us. Okay. Hey, listeners, before we wrap up today's episode, let's talk about our fantastic sponsor, the Balloon Guild. Do you ever see amazing balloon decor online and wonder how did they make that? The Balloon Guild is revolutionizing the industry by standardizing recipes, SOPs, and offering unparalleled training. Their mission? To elevate balloon artists worldwide, ensuring efficiency, profitability, and unparalleled professionalism. For business owners and their teams, the Balloon Guild isn't just a resource, it's a game changer for growth and development. For me, it's been the ultimate shortcut in finally getting things out of my head and onto paper, so I'm not making things up on the fly and so my team can work together to create consistent, fast decor. Visit their platform today at theballoonguild.com or by using the link in the show notes. New recipes and resources are released every month. All right. Welcome back. Before we go, hit us with your knowledge. I mean, a lot of us, I think, don't hire an assistant because we don't know how to use them. So it's like the idea of hiring and training someone is more overwhelming than just continuing to do stuff ourselves. So I know that like working with mine, we've learned as we went, you know, I didn't have a system of like, how do you integrate into this workflow that I have? Like, at what point do I step in and how do you have your own email and how do I know what's going to that email? Like, what would your recommendations be as a happy assistant? What would you tell balloon business owners who are like drowning and they need help, but they don't even know where to start? I would say make a list of the things that you know you need to get off your plate. All of the things that you know you need to get off your plate, the things that you hate, the things that you just know you shouldn't be doing that somebody could be trained to do. 
doesn't have to be an immediate thing. It could be some of those things on that list could be like, you know, six months from now, I want to have trained somebody to do this. But I think making a list, you'll realize that there's actually more that could be offloaded than you maybe previously thought. We're kind of, Tiffany and I are actually like working on that right now with me, trying to figure out things that I can get off of my plate because I'm taking some other things off of her plate. So in order to do that, we know we need to offload some things that I'm doing. And there's a lot of things that I just do because I'm like good at it. I'm fast at it and know that I'm capable of doing it. Mm -hmm. But there's plenty of things that I could, you know, slowly as we're going, be training somebody else to do those things, getting somebody else comfortable doing those things. So I think that's the best place to start is just like, making a hard list of like from little tiny things to big things, even if you don't know necessarily how to train right now for those things, having it on paper and realizing that there's probably a lot of stuff that you could have somebody helping you do. And also it helps like in the hiring process, having a concrete list of like, these are things that even if you don't know how to do right now, I want to be able to train you to do them. That way they Mm -hmm. kind of have in their mind things that they could be working towards in the future. Yeah. Do you actually try to get sales? Like are sales part of your job at all? Or it's everything that comes in you're responsible for? It's mostly everything that comes in. We do have people that like we have a chat box on the website. So you do have people that will just reach out and be like, hey, I have an event coming up. I have some questions about an order. I usually handle all of that kind of stuff. So in that process, I am usually upselling and that kind of thing. But as far as like going for a sale from like, I guess, cold. Like door to door. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not doing that part because I'm honestly so busy usually just with the maintenance of what we have on the books, getting all of that finalized and then, you know, finalizing all of the new things that are coming in. Yeah. And what system do you guys use? Do you have a CRM? We don't. What? I know. You just do it all with email? Yep. (gasps) Heather. Oh my gosh. I feel like I've just discovered Tiffany's deep, dark (laughs) secret. I'm going to text her right now and convert her to 17 hats. So you like use Square for our invoicing. Okay. Uh, So you have that. All of our, like all of our clients and stuff, their emails and their phone numbers and everything are all housed certain places. But as far as like a running, like automated CRM, yeah. we okay, don't have but that. That's, but a lot of people don't. So how, like, what are some of those strategies? Like when you said the shared note, like that's yeah. super interesting to me. Are you in folders together? Do you have like a Google drive? Like how do you actually set up that? Cause I feel like that type of stuff is really overwhelming for me. Like yes. what email do you have your own email that like came through that admin email? So what are some of those tips to actually like make it work? Because I'm not just going to so, like ad- advise that someone gives someone their password to like their Gmail account or right. something. So we use Gmail for everything. Google is where everything is housed. So we keep photos on Google Drive, Google Photos. We keep, you know, like our balloon formulas and that kind of thing in sheets. So it's okay. like everybody can access it. Everybody has a Gmail account, whether it's their personal one or like Sal has his own confetti castle email address. I just use the admin one because I'm in that one all the time. We have an email that's just for the inquiries coming in. And then I take those and put it all into our Google calendar. As far as like strategies, like one of our ongoing strategies, I would say for like that customer rapport piece is we will every like, two or three months, gather the list of everybody that had events this time last year. So like we just did it with our clients from May and June of last year. Mm -hmm. So like in April, I went through and I sent a message to all of those people saying, Hey, like, you know, can you believe it's been a year since we were a part of your event? Did you know we now have marquees? Basically just sent them like an update and also a link to go ahead and book on the calendar. So we're going ahead and getting those people back on the calendar, updating them with things that have changed since, you know, they were around us last time. And that's, I feel like that's proven to be pretty effective. Just having that touch point with people. Yeah, absolutely. For me, 
I feel like that's brought in like 50% rebookings. Like I swear by that. I set a yeah. reminder like nine months out, sometimes even it's even like six months, just give them a long time to rebook. And yeah. that alone, it's just been so nice because then you're doing the same event again. And it's so much easier than like trying to figure out everything from scratch. Like right. just before this, I did a prom last weekend and they were like, hey, can we just book you right now for next year's prom? Like same right. thing, <laughs> same place. And I was just like, yeah. yes, like that's amazing. Absolutely. Right. Okay, so you have Square. So that essentially yes. is your CRM. You're not yes. working with nothing. I thought you had oh, like no, no, no. email and paper and pencil and I was going <laughs> to cry. <laughs> I was no. like, please, God, tell me no. Oh, neat. Well, oh, that, I mean, I feel like I, we've gotten a little peek inside your brain, but I feel like you have so much more knowledge to give. Maybe I will, <laughs> I'll sidebar with you. I feel like we we sure. could maybe do another episode on some strategy here because I feel like the biggest roadblock is that very first one that like, I don't know how to utilize an assistant, so I'm just not going to do it. And then I think the second roadblock is like, now I don't know how to actually integrate them. You know, I have the person, but like, I don't know how to get the Gmails. I don't know how to communicate. I don't. So like that, I think is where it gets tricky. And then I would say the other stumbling block is getting messy. You know, it's like, well, I've hired this person and now I don't want to tell them I don't like how they're doing it. So I'm just going to keep paying them. And it's terrible. So yes. I've seen all three of those things happen in other people's businesses, but you are certainly I feel like too, involved. Like admin is one of those things that people are really hard pressed to like give control over. Absolutely. Like when I'm at like events and stuff and people, I mean, people come up and want to talk to me and like pick my brain about things. I'm like, this is so crazy. Like I didn't know that there was such a, like such a need for a hundred percent. And so a lot of what people ask is like, how did like Tiffany train you to like give the right responses and that kind of thing. And it's like, it just took time, but she had to like, just take the initial step of like releasing the control and knowing that it wasn't going to be perfect. It probably wasn't going to be exactly the way that she wants it to be. I would probably say like, just knowing her as a friend, I would say that like, probably now there's some things that I do better than she would have thought to do herself. So I feel like she's thankful in that capacity that she did hand over control so long ago, because yeah. I don't know, I just feel like that's like an overwhelming response. When I tell people like, how much I do people are like, how did that even begin? And it's just you have to release control. Little by little, right? Yeah. I mean, I would say the first time that I got a notification that I had like a thousand dollar invoice paid and I was like, I don't even know what this event is, but let alone like I didn't have to get the job. I didn't build the job. I just have a thousand dollars in my account right now. Like it is magical. Yes. Well, thank you for sharing your time with us and giving us some insight into the behind the scenes of Confetti Castle. Yeah, there's so much more we can chat about and maybe we will. But for now, this is a great start. Thank you so much. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for listening. As usual, I tried to keep it bright and light. Our presenting sponsor is 17 Hats, the CRM I use to cut the chaos and manage my entire balloon business. From the lead capture form on my website to workflows and email templates, invoicing and grab and go garland automated bookings, it's all powered by 17 Hats, the best customer relationship management system for balloon businesses. There's even a 50% off coupon code waiting for you in the show notes wherever you're listening. I'll see you next week in another episode.